Hi, I'm Nicole Alvarez with your Odyssey check-in with Eddie Vedder. Hi, Eddie. Oh, cool. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm okay. How about yourself? I'm, I'm excellent. I wanted to say thank you because I know that in the past you don't really do these a lot. So this means a lot to me in particular. So thank you. Well, I, I didn't know, but I, 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 and then I would have done it anyway, but I, I kind of owe you one. How so? Um, well, you, you were gracious enough and it was probably a few years back now to go on Let's Talk with my daughter and her friend Layla. Um, I don't know if you remember that, their little podcast thing. Oh, you have no idea. Me and your daughter are actually very close, and she I take care of her here, so whenever I get a chance, she takes me to a bunch of Gen Z shows, like just artists that I would never go see, and she teaches me about TikTok, and she is, Eddie, she is a magnificent, magnificent girl. <laughs> Yeah, she's a, she's something else. How cool that she is. Um, I have a story that I want to share with you before we start, because it's one of my favorite stories. Um, I, I got into radio, actually, when I was like 14. I knew that I was going to do this because I wanted to meet my favorite band, and my favorite band has always been Pearl Jam. So I got hired at K-Rock eventually in 2003, and the first person that I met was Tim Armstrong of Rancid. So we became oh. friends. Yeah, isn't and he is wonderful as well. Yeah. But so we became friends and one day he calls me and he says, I'm gonna sing with Eddie at this Ramones tribute show. Do you wanna come? I'll mm. give you tickets. And I was like, Yeah, of course. So I show up and I was already happy to be there. And some guy grabs me and he says, Are you Nicole? And I said, Yes. And he's like, I'm supposed to take you to Eddie. So he takes me upstairs into a room that's got a Ramon, Lisa Presley, Chris Rock. It was already insanity. And I remember Tim took me to meet you and you were gracious enough to take a picture with me. But the funny thing was, you guys were going to sing a Ramon show, but X played before you and took the song you were going to sing. Do you remember that? <laughs> you know what? I don't. Yeah. I don't. Does that mean we didn't do it? Or That <laughs> means you were going to do, I think Sheena is a punk rocker, oh. and you ended up doing I Believe in Miracles. Okay. Okay. We had a we had a backup. <laughs> yeah, you had a backup. You did. It was it was a magnificent pivot. So I I'll always remember that night was very special to me, um, as was getting to hear the new album before anybody else. So let's get into dark matter, shall we? Okay, Nicole. Let's do this. Okay. So I've listened to it now about seventeen times, and you've got to know. I, I know your music inside and out, all of it. And I think the evolution of who you are as musicians and human beings is very evident on Dark Matter. Were you surprised in any way by what came out of you during the experience of making Dark Matter? Um, that's a good question. Um, was I surprised? You know, what? one thing I, I, I think I was a little surprised at... at um, just how good it sounded, <laughs> how good the records, how good this guy Andrew Watt made our band sound, and and the performances he was getting out of us, um, and it was moving very quickly. You know, it was recorded and written like really quickly, and with with the end of almost every night being a, just about a completed piece of music, if if not. Uh, very very close and and it just kept a momentum going which you know we, we just hadn't recorded like that in a while and you know we, we've recorded all different ways in, in over these many years but um i think the biggest surprise was was the um i guess the power that was coming out of the speakers you know it was it, it had um it held up at, at, at loud volume and um and and then the lyrics, I, I think you know the you're writing lyrics to just to, to to not keep up with the music, but to to be part of the fabric, you know, to 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 mesh or or you know if there's a a song with a tempo, it ended up being a song called Running, you know, the, the, those lyrics are are part and parcel with the. the the tempo and the performances of that song, you know, so it's, it's a song about, you know, it's a frenetic lyric to go with a 
of frenetic songs. So those are the things that you, I guess, are, you know, you're, you're I guess you're just surprised that you, you finish it. <laughs> when I saw you guys at the Troubadour, I was very lucky to be there. And I love, that's my second listening party that I've been to. Gigaton was my first one. And I love that you always have tequila. So thank you for that. Um, but uh, what I saw when I watched you guys experience the music with us is you had the giddies. You were jumping up and down with the rest of your bandmates. And it, it was almost like you guys were 16 years old in the mosh pit watching your favorite band. And I, I imagine Andrew Watt has an insane amount of energy. I imagine that's what you're talking about when you say how he, what he brought out of you, that kind of giddiness. What? Well, yeah, you, almost, almost to the level of embarrassment. I, I mean, it's really... <laughs> Um, pretty over the top, but I'm telling you, it's so pure. He wouldn't mind me saying this. It it comes from such a, a pure place that it, it's just truly undeniable. And you know, I'm sure the Stones felt the same way working with him. And you know, he's he's just really focused. He also has this strange kind of ADD um, ability to recall. You know, it would be a detriment to to. Maybe some people that uh, maybe had a little bit more of a, a normal occupation, but um, you know he can he can recall things. He can remember a take that you know Mike McCready solo from ten days ago, and he can remember that it was take number three. You know, he just really you know so it it, it he found the perfect um, occupation to to put this um, this kind of savant like connection to to music into uh you know he's using his powers for good <laughs> it's it's really um it's it's pretty stunning and and it it bodes well for um you know like i said keeping things moving you know yeah uh, the momentum momentum is is huge and um and it's also turns into positivity and confidence and um and flexibility you know and and then it then it's and it's the ability to you know create an atmosphere where you feel like you can experiment or or try something or or shoot work harder to make it better you know you're not like okay i think that's that's good enough it's there was no kind of good enough it it had to rise to the level of you know, the guitar had to match the level of, of performance of Matt Cameron on the drums. The the vocals had to match the the uh, intensity of the guitar. So it was just kind of everybody keep stepping up, st- stepping up to to reach kind of a a, a peak or pinnacle of of what is possible. Um, you're always trying to do your best, but. Um, it turns out you could you could do even better. So I'm glad that you said that because listening to the album over and over again, what I got from it is I hear the best of the best. So I'm, I mean by that, all of you threw down your aces. And I, I hear all of you. I hear Matt. I hear Stone. I hear Mike. I hear Jeff. I hear all of you loud and clear. But then I also hear some new tricks. And I imagine that's also some of the stuff that Andrew brought out. Well, there's also something we work with a guy uh, when we work with Andrew uh, when I did this kind of solo record thing um, called Earthling, and and you know something in the mixes, you know, like what you could say about the mixes, like everything's louder than everything else. Yeah, I have a shirt that says that. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, because I think it's a, um, it's um oh god, uh, Lemmy's it's a Motorhead lyric. Oh, okay. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Uh, well, yeah, I was just applying it to the the mixes. Meaning, if you if you want to if you want to focus on what the bass is doing, it, it's more just attenuating your ear to bass, and all of a sudden that's the loudest thing. And then you say, well, let's what's the kick drum doing? And and then that becomes the loudest thing just by directing your your brain. <laughs> you know, moving your ear is like as if you were a horse <laughs> <laughs> catching up. You know, just Tuning your radar, whatever you want to tune it into, could be a background vocal or a 
a guitar melody that you think is kind of in the back, but when you focus in on it, it's right there. So that's a trick, you know, where every instrument kind of has its own lane. Um, you know, and I don't, I don't know where he maybe picked up on that, even through some of the more pop music that he did, but it's, um, it, it certainly can apply here. <laughs> like I say, he kind of uses his powers for good and, and, um, yeah, we were very fortunate. I'm very impressed with this whole process. What he did with the Stones record was incredible. And what I've heard when I when I first listened to the record, to, to Dark Matter, each song has its very own unique identity, like its own universe. But he masterfully, yeah. seamlessly made it very cohesive. It's, a, it's an experience. It's a whole journey from beginning to end. Like running, running was the one that stood out for me because it was punk rocky. But it doesn't, you know how typically you have an album and you throw in something that sounds punk rock when the rest of it might not. He just made that all made sense. I don't know how to explain it better, but he married sound in a way that I've never heard before. You guys all did, actually, because I guess you had something to do with it now, didn't you? Well, you know you know what's cool about it? Um, and if I can say it without sounding too self-aggrandizing, but... Um, you know, a lot of records, you know, there's a couple, three songs that are maybe you put in the more difficult listening category or something <laughs> that or it'd be, it, 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 it's a good song, it's there, but it could be an acquired taste. Yeah. Um, it could be a, a tempo or timing thing or, um, you know, uh, but, and so, and so when you do a set list, you uh, a set list, a running order mm -hmm. to the record, which basically is a set list, right? Um, you know, you try to kind of figure out where could these songs live, you know, can you put them, you know, a after this one, you think this one's really good, so then maybe we can contest the listener and, and we'll sneak that one in there and, and the momentum from the one song will carry into the other and you, you kind of work on this little, see if you can play a trick to get these ones that are a little... Um, little less accessible let's say yeah that makes sense but but with this record it was the only trick to sequencing was kind of telling the story um if there is one but it was really it, it was just quality quality piece of music after quality piece of music so it was that was um that was an enjoyable process you know it was it was it was cool to just think that you know, even towards the end of side two, you're you're still going pretty hard. You know, yeah. um, still got some rocking songs with uh, good good momentum and up tempo. Um, there was no no lack of, of good material, so um, that that was that doesn't always happen. <laughs> when I was a teenager, I watched. The M back in the day when MTV had rockumentaries, Pearl Jam had its rockumentary, and you had said something. It was the first time I heard this. I've heard it a lot since, but a lot of artists don't like to give the meaning to songs because that kind of robs us of what we need it to mean to us, right, for survival, for whatever reason. Um, so I'm going to try and sidestep without asking you to tell me the meaning of these songs, but is there a song that's most personal to you on the record? Uh, well, uh, I mean, I, I think the whole record feels personal. Um, I, I'd say there's a song called special, uh, something special on there, which is, it's really kind of a parenting, um, mom and dad, uh, seeing their kids grow up and, and leaving the nest and either going to college or going to high school and, you know, hoping you did an, uh, a good enough job to to know that they're going to be okay out in the world. You know, because the the world's going to give them that's where gonna, they're going to learn their lessons. Yes. And, and and no matter you know <clears throat> love and support that you you raise them with and discipline um, that you know once once the you know, the, the world's going to, there's going to be a bunch of lessons out there. The, the, the world's going to hand them difficulties, hopefully not on a daily basis, but you, you hope that you've given them the tools to um, navigate um, through the, the, the good times and the pitfalls. And 
So I, that, that was, I, I could say that was a little bit more unabashedly personal. Okay. Uh, you know, That's a good answer. Parent. I will accept that, Eddie. I will accept that. I want to talk about the live shows because I think it's such a big part of the Pearl Jam world. I myself have been to 112 of them, and I might have like lost count of a few. And I like to go to the big ones. Like I went to the Wrigley ones during the storm. I try to go to anything in Chicago. I've been to MSG. I've been to some in Europe. And it's, it's, it's very special what happens in those rooms. I can't imagine how excited you are to introduce dark matter into those rooms. Is this something that you feel extra, extra excited about? Mixing them in with your, with your catalog? Yeah, we're, uh, uh, if you would have asked me four days ago, I, I, I would have been maybe a little more nervous, but we, we've just had our first couple of days of practice and, um, and I think everybody worked hard on the songs coming in to practice as opposed to learning them once we get here. Um, so now, uh, yeah. tell you, <laughs> Miss Alvarez, yes. but now we, that, um, now I can, I can feel the, uh, um, cause it, it felt a little daunting. I, I, you know, as we said, the, the sound of the record is, is galvanized and, 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 has a lot of strength to it. So could we do that live? Um, now it, it, that question has been answered in the last couple of days. So n- now I'm getting excited. I mean, I could have answered that for you, Eddie. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I've seen you do it live. I've been to 112 of these things. I've never spent more money on anything the way that I spent money on going to Pearl Jam shows. And it's worth every penny. I'm going to ask you a few fun questions. Like my favorite part of a Pearl Jam show, for example, it doesn't happen all the time, but whenever... You say Keely hit the lights. I don't know why I love that. I don't even know who Keely is, but I assume Keely hits the lights. I love Keely. But there's little moments like that that us Pearl Jam fans adore. Do you have a moment that you love? Is it watching the crowd sing back to you? Is it walking on stage for the first time? Is it watching Mike shred it? Do you have a moment that means something to you? I think think every show, I, I think that's why... I wouldn't, I wouldn't say, you know, I get nerves before the show or, or nervous, but I, I do, I, I'm, I kind of, there, there's a, there's a different kind of focus that happens and, and it's kind of being ready to, to find that or, or to be conscious of, of what might happen tonight that, that didn't happen ever before, <laughs> you know, being aware of, you know, it's just being a point, I guess. Yeah, and um, and it, it could be a reaction from the crowd. It, it could be locking eyes with somebody, and you can tell they're going through something. Uh, that that again, going back to your comment about people's interpretations of the songs and what it means to them, or where they were, you know, when they heard the song, or who they were with when they heard the song. You know, they're they're first boyfriend, their, their now husband, their, their father who's passed away, you know, you can tell, you know, when something's going on, you know, and, and I have a pretty good vantage point and I can, I can, um, kind of find those things and that, that inspires me and, and, um, you know, and, and then, you know, really locking in with the group and, and another great pleasure of, of being in this, this band is, um, standing right in front of uh, Matt Cameron, who's just, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of great, great drummers out there these days. It's a particularly healthy time for, you know, to, to be listening to, uh, if you appreciate drummers and what, what, what drummers can do behind the kit. But, um, he's a powerhouse. Matt, he's just so extraordinary. He, he's, he's like a, either a fast race car, you know, there's, there's horsepower there. There's, you know, literally, it feels like you're you're riding a a, a, a racehorse, and and it's wild, and and it's and it's uh, always different. You know, it's almost like he never plays the same thing once. You know, he's he's really uh, uh, he's a key to the the band being a, a you know, if you were to be a great band, you you would need a great, and um, we we certainly have that. And and the way he locks in with Jeff, and then the way Jeff and Stone lock in, and then 
then it allows Mike a, a canvas to do his, you know, it could be very technical and perfect, and it could be Jackson Pollock as well. Like <laughs> Mike, it's his own kind of, um, um, <laughs> I was going to say wonder kind. Yeah. He's, he's, he's another um, incredible specimen of, of what a musician can do when they're infected. <laughs> yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it happen. I've seen him do things like put his guitar behind his head and his eyes closed and spin around. I've never seen anything like it, honestly. Um, it's quite impressive. Every single member of your band, honestly, has something so special that they bring to the table. Where would you say, because I know that you love music very much and you're also a musician's musician, where would you say is the best place to listen to new music? Like if somebody were to take Dark Matter out for a spin, I think it's in my car, always with the windows down, is where I like to hear new music. But where would you say is the best spot for new music? I, I would say in your car uh, with the windows closed or, or and whether you're moving or just still. I mean, I do it in the driveway. I, I think my neighbors heard this record. Before me, but, <laughs> um, but, but also, you know, being out on the road is, is, you know, with the windows open, that that's mm-hmm. pretty good too. And, and also I got to say some of my best listening experiences have been with, you know, Walkman's on a hike at the top of Mount, you know, there's something about the outdoors yeah. you know, or on the, the shoreline. The ocean. Yeah. It's, somewhere uh, by the ocean. Yeah. Something about, it's like nature has, has, uh, has a, has a hand in it. Um, you know, and I, I think probably that it, because lyrically nature is is, is in there. Um, I think nature and the ocean and waves and um, and uh, whether it's a, a calm sunset or a, a stormy, I, I think I think nature informs a lot of the, the lyrics as well. So when you hear it in that kind of um, outdoor environment, it. it it seems like there's a connection there, you know, and things like Into the Wild, for sure. You know, that's just a, that's just an outdoor record. 100%. It's one of my favorite. If you could go back as you are now, this version of yourself and tell younger Eddie one thing that might be useful as you travel through, what would you go back and tell younger you? Hmm. Um... I, I might have to think about that, or maybe I can take it less seriously and just come up with an answer. Um, I could tell you what others have said. <laughs> they all, right, give me, they give all me an match. example. Um, uh, it was over the weekend. I was at Coachella, and I forgot if it was the Deftones or if it was the Gorillas. Not the Gorillas, Blur. One of them said that he'd go back and tell himself just not to be a dick. And then most everybody else has answered that I would tell myself it would all be all right to just enjoy be here and enjoy. It's all going to be all right. Yeah, the moment, the moment is important. But I feel like I've always lived that way. And I don't know if it's because of upbringing or, or stresses that I went through young that I, I um, or people that I've lost um, and, and all different areas of, of uh, my life. Um, I, I just feel like I've always had that kind of Carpe diem, uh, seize the day. Uh, I think that's, you know, the porch was about that. You know, that's on the first record. It, um, it's, it's present tense. It's all in there. It's always yeah. been in there. Uh, well, but, uh, yeah, I, I think, yeah, I don't know if I have, I, I think it's, I want to say like, be careful. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually great so advice. That but I what think, does that mean? <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, I, I think it's like push it, you know, push yourself and, and, and go wild as well. You know, I'm, I think that's where all that climbing of the rafters back in the day was. It was, it was seizing the moment and it was going wild. So for me to say, be careful, that's actually ridiculous. <laughs> it is. And I, I love that about you. Before I, I wrap it up and let you go, and again, thank you for your time. Um, I'm, I'm going to preface this by saying that in the same way that I've 
read and heard you talk about like the Who and Pete Townsend and what they meant to you, that's what you and your band have meant to me. So you've always been like a like a compass or a lighthouse, and I've just always wanted to say thank you. <sighs> well, <laughs> Nicole me some chills here on my arms. I and, named my daughter uh, after you, actually. She was a, a little bit of a miracle baby, and uh, I needed to name her to kind of make it real. And I was like, well, obviously I'm going to name her something after Pearl Jam, but it wasn't going to be Jeremy. So I named her Evie. Yeah. So she's Evie. Yeah. yeah. I borrowed your initials. Uh, Olivia's actually met her. Um, she's a super kid. She loves rock and roll, so I'm doing something right. How old is she now? She's seven going on 18. Oh. <laughs> Oh, incredible. Yeah, but I just... I'm sorry. I, 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 let me just say, it's, you've said all these really kind things about the group, and, you know, I, it's just very... Um, it's it's humbling, and, um, you know, we're just kind of doing what we do and trying our best, and, and to hear that it, it's had impact, is it's really meaningful, and... Um, that's that's something you could have never imagined. <laughs> and um, we're we're on behalf of the group. We're all very very grateful and um, for for you to put that into words and and share it. I, I it's very appreciated. <laughs> well, timing is everything, and I think that it's absolutely the right time for this record. I can't wait for everybody to get it because I think that the collected wisdom that you've all acquired throughout the years. It's all over this album, and it sounds like you had one hell of a time. So congratulations on album number 12. I'm very excited for everybody to finally get it. Okay, will you and everybody else enjoy the shows? Um, oh, yes. I was going to mention, we just, uh, I can say this as of today, um, we, we play in Los Angeles on the 21st and 22nd at the Forum in May, but the other one... Ohana in California, so it's that festival that we've done. You don't think I've been to all of them, Eddie Vedder? <laughs> Come on now. Well, uh, this year it's September 27th, 29th, and as of today, I can tell you the headliners on the 27th and 29th are going to be our group. Hell yes. So Pearl Jam and the uh, on the seashore is going to be... Um, <laughs> something to look forward to for us certainly and then in the middle on the 28th uh we we have neil young and crazy horse so oh my goodness um yeah they'll be good the, the whole uh rosters are are very impressive and inspiring and exciting but um but yeah it should be um it should be good i think those will be yeah oh i think we go to australia after that but um, I don't know. I'm going to see you in Spain at couple. I'm going to like Mad Cool, and then I think I'm seeing you in Barcelona, and then Chicago again. I'm not kidding. I'm like a big non-psycho fan, although I'm I'm teetering on that word a little <laughs> bit. You're probably like, who is she? But I really, um, your music to me is source, and it's like shamanic. And again, I'm not going to keep gushing, but I love you guys to death. So thank you. And with that, you know, we'll see you on the road. Okay, well, then my advice would be be careful. Okay, you too, Eddie. You too. Okay. okay. Have a great day. Bye.